Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of City Skylines and our city, Lakewood. In this episode, we're going to be filling in one of the gaps around our high density neighborhood that we talked about last episode. And that gap is going to be this one right here in between the university campus and the high density neighborhood. I'd like to put in a varsity sports team right here because the university campus currently doesn't have a team associated with it. And that's also going to include a little bit of an entertainment district around the outside edge of the uh, varsity sports stadium that we're going to put in here. So that'll be for the university students as well as the other citizens of our city. And that's going to include actually two parks from the Park Life DLC. So I want to give those a little bit of an opportunity to level up. Uh, but chances are we won't actually get to five star ratings before the end of the recording that I'm going to be doing. So what I'll probably do is I will let the game run for a little while afterwards and then skip ahead to the end and show everybody the completed area with two five star parks inside of it. And that also means that we are going to actually postpone this area right here until the next episode after this one. So we will actually unfortunately have to deal with having this kind of crazy looking monorail line for at least one more episode. So we're going to have to make a couple changes to this area before we put in our varsity sports stadium. I'm just going to move this small park out of the way to give ourselves a little bit more room to do some stuff. And I'm also going to actually take out this four lane collector road. Uh, I'd like to put the stadium close to the middle of this area here. And this road really isn't being used too much by the vehicles. It's, it's mostly just going to be a shortcut uh, for a couple of vehicles here and there. And it looks like we have some pedestrians, so I will actually make sure we have a little bit of a pedestrian pathway to go from one side to the other for when we have everything put back in here. So I'm just going to go ahead and I am going to delete all this, uh, these four lane collector roads right here. Just let these cars turn around a little bit so we don't uh, mess up their pathing too much. We'll get rid of that one and we're actually i'm going to leave this one in for now because that will be uh, the entryway to our uh, parks on either side of the stadium now as for the stadium itself i don't want to have it right on this four lane collector road right here so we're actually going to make another road parallel to this one uh, just off to the side here i'm going to put an intersection along the four lane collector road to be able to get to that parallel road and I'd like to put it uh, equidistant between this intersection on the left over here and the intersection on the right that's going towards our university campus. So I'm going to use the road tool and I am going to do my usual one gap in between the grid space here. And we're going to actually see and, and look and see that the uh, cost of a new road is $1,920. So halfway between that would be $960. So we're going to just put that in right there. And we're going to do the same on the other side. I realize we don't have an intersection over here, but I still want to have the intersection equidistant from the uh, university uh, intersection over here as well. We're going to bring that straight down to our four lane collector road. And before we go any further, I'm going to go into the junction tool and I'm going to remove the stoplights that the game has automatically put in there. Uh, we may have to add the stop signs eventually, uh, but for now, I'm just going to leave it wide open to allow traffic to smoothly go along the four lane collector road right here. I'd also like to smooth out these corners. Uh, if you go into the bulldozer tool and we try and delete some of these road segments, we can see that it's actually going to want us to delete quite a large section of the road. So I'm going to go back into the road tool and we are going to actually cut these segments of roads so that we can delete a smaller bit. So using the outer circle of the road tool here, I'm going to have it intersect this node at the corner. We're going to go down to right about there and just have a little road off to the side and do that over here as well. And that's going to allow us to just delete these smaller segments of road around the corner. And then we can uh, quite easily just put in a curved road around that corner there. It, and it honestly doesn't look too much different, but I think it looks a little bit better. We'll just do that again real quick on the other side. Add back in and delete that corner and then smooth it all out. There we go. And now as for the type of stadium, our varsity sports team, I should say, uh, we do have one already over here as part of the Thornton Career Institute, and that is the basketball arena. And I uh, kind of recall when I put that in there at the time, I was actually watching uh, the uh, documentary on Netflix about Michael Jordan and the Chicago Bulls. And that was kind of my inspiration for putting that in there. I'm not even a basketball fan, but uh, that was actually a pretty good documentary. So 
On the other side over here, what I'm going to put in, I'm just going to use this as a guideline for right now, this road, just to make sure it's centered on the area here. I'm going to pause the game just so it doesn't mess up the traffic too much. And I'd like to put in a um, baseball arena. So I believe uh, a baseball park, I guess it's called. Uh, I believe uh, Michael Jordan actually did play a little bit of baseball. So I think I'll stick with that theme and, and stick another arena in there that he's uh, been playing or another sport that he's been playing. So I think that would be pretty cool. We just get rid of this road segment now. Okay, we'll get the game going again. And so you'll notice that uh, this uh, the stadium here is actually the team associated with it. It's called the Lakewood Spartans. So it's not the university campus of Lakewood Spartans. It's just the Lakewood Spartans. So if you'll recall from my uh, campus video that actually if you don't put the stadium within the uh, campus district, that the sports team will actually represent the city itself and not the university campus or whatever campus you have. So that's, there's, there's really nothing wrong with having a sports team for your city, but you do miss out on some of the added benefits of having it part of your uh, campus, actually. So you'll notice also in the bottom right-hand corner here, we don't have any buttons to uh, go to the campus area info window. So what we'll do is we will go to our districts menu. We'll go back to the campus district. And you can see that it actually doesn't extend uh, that far, as I said. So we'll just put that over across the street and include the stadium there. And if we go back to the stadium info window, we can see now that we have the campus area info window and the name of our team has changed to the University Campus of Lakewood Buccaneers. So clicking on the campus area info window, that will bring us to the varsity sports tab of our campus area info window. And we can actually spend a little bit of money and hire some cheerleaders and coaching staff which will increase the winning chances of our team playing in the stadium here. So there's no downside to having, um, you know, the sports team just associated with your city, uh, but you're not, you're, you're missing out on some of the added benefits if you want to spend a little bit of extra money and you can actually uh, increase the winning chances of your team. So I did notice though that our basketball team is already called the Buccaneers. So I'd like to actually just change the name of our uh, team right here real quick. So we'll go back to the uh, Varsity Sports tab here. I'm thinking we should change it to the Spartans. And as for a color, I'm thinking we should try and change it to the uh, the color of the roofs that's on the, the buildings of our university here. So we're going to change it to uh, a shade of blue. Not too dark and not too light. It's kind of in the middle there maybe a little bit lighter than that and i think that looks pretty close so we'll leave it as it is right there and we can see that people are already starting to line up and uh wait for the game to start which is going to be uh looks like next month so uh they're a little bit ahead of the game here but that's pretty good so there are lots of hype uh surrounding our team here and i'm also while i'm at it i'm gonna go into the policies tab I'm going to put in a fan support club, an advertising campaign, and I'm not going to do a sponsorship deal right now. I'm just going to leave it as it is. So we can see that the number of people coming here is quite significant. So I want to add another option for them to be able to get here. Uh, so that includes uh, tying in our public transportation network to the stadium here. Uh, we do have the tram network that does stop right out front here, which is going to be pretty good but I'm also going to add in a uh, metro line. So if we go into the metro window uh, down at the bottom here, if I can find it, there it is. I'm actually going to put in an elevated metro station. I think this came out with the uh, Sunset Harbor DLC. So it's gonna be a little bit different than what we have uh, in the low density neighborhood over here. We do have the elevated metro station and we're going to have that right across the street from the stadium. And then I'm also going to put in some, uh, some pathways to allow people to come down towards the intersection over here. And that includes being able to uh, get off the tram, go over the crosswalk here and then come across over to the other side. So we'll do that real quick and we will actually go into our pathways tool here. And we're going to come out just across over to here like this do that on either side and give them an option to come across. 
And then we're going to have an elevated pathway over the intersection here that will just allow our citizens to cross the road without having to wait for the stoplights or anything like that. Maybe we will bring this down like this, I think. And then we'll bring it down on the other side over here as well. Go, I think that looks pretty cool. Now I'd also like to put in, and you may have noticed that there's actually no crosswalks across from where the metro is here to the stadium. So what we're gonna do is we are going to actually replace these road segments with another type of road. We'll go into our road tool and we will actually, if I go to the bulldozer actually, you can see that uh, the segments of road that I'm trying to delete here, uh, if I were to replace one of these road segments, the crosswalks would be kind of mismatched and not really aligned very well. So what I'm going to do is I am going to um, go and I'm going to actually pause the game for a second and I'm going to just delete these segments of road. And then I am going to switch to the uh, two lanes, two lane road with trees and just bring that across over to here. We're going to go uh, just to, let's say, right about where uh, the ramp from the metro line comes down to the bottom. So we're going to go. To, oh. That is not the two lane road with trees. We'll just upgrade that. And I'm going to do the same across the other side. So we're going to bring that right to where the ramp on the metro line is. And then we're going to go to just a normal two lane road in the middle. And you can see now we have a crosswalk close to where the pedestrian path is, as well as crosswalks in the middle near where the ramps coming from the metro line are as well. Okay, cool. Uh, so now we're going to set up the metro line as well. We need to make sure that we have that tied into the metro network of the city. And unfortunately, we actually don't have really much of a metro system in the high density neighborhood. If we go to our public transportation view, we can see that most of the, uh, well, the only metro line that we have is actually in this low density neighborhood across the way. So I am really only have one option and I'm going to tie the metro network or the stadium here into the metro of the public transportation hub across the way. Eventually we may tie it into other things, but for now this is really the only option that we have without going all the way across the city. Uh, maybe 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 a good idea to have a line coming across uh, to the other uh, metro monorail train hub over here. But for now I'm just going to have it go to the transport hub. I'm going to have that run parallel to the six lane arterial road that we have here and just up all the way to the transport hub. And I'm going to zoom out just to make sure that I don't delete a whole bunch of buildings by putting this in. I think right about there will be good. And then we'll go to the curve lane tool or the curve, curve track tool, pardon me, to finish this up and we will come across like that. And so that means we are going to have to have the metro line coming from the above ground metro station to go below ground. So we'll just bring that across. We'll change our elevation step to the lowest step right here and just have a gradual go, or pardon me, a gradual change uh, from what it was down to underground. Like so. Ooh, that looks terrible. Looks like the terrain is having a little bit of an issue there. So we will try that again. There we go, that looks a little bit better. You can see just the gradual kind of step down from where the uh, raised platform is towards the tunnel over here. We will tie that into our underground line that we already have. That's a little bit of a sharp corner. Let's bring that across a little bit more. Pause the game. Just get rid of the six lane road for a second. Mm, 
Hmm, I don't like that. Let's uh, let's go back and try that again. I might not have much of a choice on the corner here. Might be just a little bit too sharp. There. It's not too bad. I think that'll work perfectly fine. Let's put this lane back in so we don't screw up traffic too much. Let everything go. And then we will put in our transport line. So we will start over at the raised platform, over to the transport hub and back. So we will turn everything on now. So it's not going to help us too much uh, for people coming to the game. But I'm thinking once the game's finished and they start leaving, that will help out quite a bit. Our stadium's almost full already, 720 out of 750. So most of the people who are coming to the game are actually already here. Now as for the parks, uh, we do have quite a bit of room on either side of the stadium. So I was actually thinking about putting in uh, two different parks. So uh, we already have a zoo and a nature reserve. So we do have the Meadow Meadows Nature Reserve up on the hill over here. And then we also have the Bedford Animal World uh, just over here. So the other two that we have available to us are the, where are they? We have the um, City Park is this one right here and then we also have the amusement park so i'm actually thinking about putting one on either side of the stadium that doesn't mean we can't put another one somewhere else uh, but i think it would look kind of cool to have one on either side of the stadium just to fill in the area so as for the city park uh, i think it should go on the left here and the amusement park would go on the right over here so i'm actually going to remove the trees uh, for the area where the amusement park is and then keep them in for the area where we're going to have the city park. So I think the contrast between these two areas is going to look pretty cool once we actually get the parks inside of them. Uh, but while I was deleting those trees, I did notice that I didn't actually finish this pedestrian pathway network that I was talking about. So I did realize that there's actually no access for the citizens crossing the crosswalk to get to the pedestrian pathway network without having to travel towards either the university campus or even just going around that they've already been doing. What I want to do is I want to actually just put another pedestrian pathway just right in the middle here. We're going to come up just a little bit and then curve across to the other side. And that will give them the option to now, once they cross these crosswalks, to come over and join up to the uh, stadium just across the way. I'm also going to put in another metro line just right here real quick. Uh, this will be just a placeholder. As I mentioned, I'm not exactly sure what I want to do. I might have it come towards this metro monorail train hub or even up towards this area once we fill it in. But for now, this is just going to be a placeholder so that I don't put in a bunch of buildings in the area here and then have to come back and to delete them afterwards. Now as for the parks themselves, uh, we're going to come off of this uh, four lane collector road that we have up at the top. We're going to go one and a half grid squares away from that and then down also one and a half grid squares and do the same on either side. Get those lined up and then we're actually going to come across and then back up along the other side. That should be even. And I'm going to go through and I am just going to, to uh, smooth out some of these corners. All right, now as for the parks themselves, uh, we're going to have to paint our park districts to get them in here. And you need to be careful because it looks like the uh, campus district era is going to actually interfere with our park district. When we paint these in, we need to make sure that we don't accidentally cut off the uh, stadium that we have. So we'll make sure that we just kind of come across here and fill in the area. And then we're going to do the same thing just on the other side over here. Here we go. So those just have the default names in there right now. And once we actually put in the desired parks that we're going to put in, it'll change to something that's more appropriate to what it's going to be. So we're going to put on the left hand side here, we're going to put our uh, city park. 
And then we are going to switch uh, Aspen Meadows into the amusement park. And that is going to change to Aspen World. <laughs> so not much of a change, but uh, it does change a little bit. And then we're also going to make sure that we have our um, utilities hooked up to these parks. Go, and I think we can actually uh, go back into there and delete some of this extra stuff that we have going down the middle. Just like that. Uh-oh. Looks like we cut everything off over here. I didn't realize that that was all connected like that. Uh, let's, uh, let's hook that back up. Never mind. <laughs> so we'll just leave that as it is. There we go. Okay, so uh, now we're, what we're going to need to do is we are going to need to start putting in some of the buildings for our parks. So we'll start across the way here and we will just do the uh, amusement park for right now. And I'm going to go with the park path with decorations. And I don't, really don't have a layout planned for what I want to do. Uh, but usually what I do is I have the souvenir shop right at the exit. Like so. And let's see what else, what other kind of buildings we have. Uh, we have the carousel and two game booths and it looks like uh, restrooms and cafe and a plaza. So what we'll do is we'll actually, I'm going to pause this for just a second. We're going to put the pathway back in, but not quite as far as what it was. And then curve off to either side and have a nice plaza right at the entrance. That will curve around. We'll have a pathway that goes around the outer edge here. Take off some of our guidelines. Looks like it's trying to snap to somewhere where I don't want to go. Just take those off. Ooh, looks like I can't put another pathway uh, too close to the other side over there, which is kind of too bad. Try that again, see if we can get it to uh, to get another one in there. Okay, hold on. We'll figure this out. Maybe move it over a little bit. We go we'll get that in there and try it again there we go that'll work have a nice pathway around the outside perimeter of that plaza and then what we'll do is uh coming off from the plaza we'll kind of have just different pathways going out towards the different amusement park rides so uh, for right now we don't have too much we have the carousel and the game booths as i mentioned We'll have the carousel and we'll throw in a couple game booths as well as the cafe and restroom. I think we'll have that just around the plaza as well. Just like that. We'll turn the game back on. We're also going to check out uh, where are we going to go? We're going to go into our policies. We're going to turn on an advertising campaign. Even more fun. Recycled garbage and uh, night tours. That'd be kind of cool to have people going to the amusement park at night. Even though we're not running the day-night cycle, uh, it still is going to benefit us. Uh, more visitors, I think, during nighttime. They still kind of go through a day-night cycle, even though the appearance of the game doesn't change because uh, people still go to and from work and, and things like that. Um, and I think we'll leave that for now. Check out and make sure we have our entertainment value. So we're almost double the entertainment value needed for the next level. And all we need to do now is just actually wait uh, for people to come and visit the park. And so another thing that I'd like to do to allow the citizens a little bit easier access to do that is we are going to have another section of our pedestrian pathway network. We're going to just come up across here 
to say about... Uh, let me think. Right about here. I don't want to interfere too much with the grids that we have coming off of the roadway. I want to make sure that I can actually use some of those to put in some buildings. We're going to come across just like that. A little bit of interference, but not too bad. We'll try and replicate the same thing just on the other side over here. Come out across in between there. Just like that. And we'll smooth out these corners as well on the pathways. Okay, so that will also now give our pedestrians an option. Uh, anybody coming from the far side over here could technically, if they wanted to, uh, walk across here and get to the other side where we have our university campus as well as the metro station. So we're going to do something kind of similar to the city park over here. Uh, I'm going to have the uh, pathway coming down and then going towards the, the plaza. Uh, but we're going to try and stick with the theme of contrast between the two areas. So we have the trees over here. We have no trees over here. And for the pathways, I'd like to kind of try and keep them a little bit more square. Uh, but over here, I'm going to kind of make it a little bit less square and kind of curvy and go around like that. We're going to have some limitations depending on uh, the types of buildings that we unlock and, and how they can line up to that pathway. So we'll have to kind of see how things go as we level up the park. Uh, but as I mentioned, we do have a plaza available to us, as well as the info booth and restrooms, and it looks like a cafe. So not too much for the city park here. So we're going to do something uh, pretty similar to what we have on the other side. Uh, but instead of the souvenir uh, shop, we'll have the info booth right at the entrance here. I think that would make the most sense to have the info booth right at the start so that anybody coming to the park will be able to figure out where they can go and what they can do. And then we are going to just have a similar plaza uh, right at the entrance, kind of having a perimeter pathway going around the outside edge. And I'm going to try and do something a little bit different if I can. Uh, this is actually the second time that I'm filming this section because the idea that I had didn't quite work out and I didn't actually practice it ahead of time. So. I was kind of uh, stuck in a loop of not really knowing exactly what I wanted to do and I did not want to waste uh, my time and everybody else's time sitting there trying to figure it out. So I'm going to try something again here, see if we can get a uh, perimeter path around the outside edge here. We do have little gaps uh, on the other sides, and that's okay. What I'd like to try and do, if I can... Oh, what the heck is this? She is uh, Amanda Wright. She is uh, she doesn't care about the roads. She's going wherever she wants, I guess, through the buildings, through the park. Uh, she is driving home. She's getting ready to go home. Uh, but apparently she needs to park her car in the parking lot here. That's weird. <laughs> I've never seen anything like that before. Okay, uh, so uh, back to what we were doing. Uh, we are going to maybe try and uh, curve these pathways a little bit around the outside edge. If we can come up with something that's going to look a little bit, uh, a little bit different, a little bit unique, maybe. But it doesn't look like the game is going to let me put a pathway uh, coming right from the center there, which is actually kind of too bad. So. Uh, we will maybe just do it on the two sides over here. Like so. Just use our curved path. Just kind of come around the outside edge. I think that looks kind of cool. And then we will put in, if we have the room, be nice. Ooh, not quite. We're close, though should probably extend that just a little bit and it would be nice to put something in uh, right in that section there. Okay, so we have our uh, park cafe and then our park restroom uh, part of the plaza right here. 
And I believe that is everything that we can put in at the moment. We don't really have anything else unlocked. Um, oh, looks like we need some water. So we'll just bring that down. And then, yeah, so we will just let these level up as we continue on to do some other things. And as I was saying, uh, chances are we're probably not going to get these to level 5 in this episode. Uh, so I, what I'll do is I'll let the game run for a little bit after I'm done recording. And then kind of skip ahead to the end and show everybody the final result. So as for uh, more entertainment that we can put in the area, we are going to go back to our um, district menus here, our district tool. And you can see now that I'm going to go to the generic paint district. I'm not actually interfering with either the park or the campus districts that are right here. So uh, painting a, a normal district, a generic district in the area isn't going to interfere with those two. So if I were to go to the campus district, you can see it actually highlights those districts and then it doesn't do anything with the generic district. What I'd like to have is in this area right here, we're going to do some uh, entertainment options. So we will go and we will highlight this and then we are going to switch it to the leisure specialization. Just like that. And then we are going to put in some buildings right there. So we'll zone those right away just along the outer edge. I'm going to go back to the district tool and I am going to paint another district. Um, around the outside edge. So uh, let's actually continue this a little bit further this way on either side. And then on the outside edge over here, see, I really hate the district tool. It's kind of, it kind of screws itself up. I really wish they had uh, just used the, the regular zoning uh, and, and allowed you to do specializations with the zoning tool instead of having to paint a district. Because if you get districts that are close together, uh, it tends to kind of screw itself up a little bit. It's kind of annoying. So uh, we'll kind of have to deal with it as we can. And then I'm going to paint, sorry, I'm going to paint this other district just on the outer edge here. And this extra district that I've painted on the outside. We are going to change that instead of the leisure specialization. We're going to change that to the tourism specialization. So with the tourism specialization, uh, that will be things like hotels and stuff like that. We'll put a hotel uh, near the parks. So anybody coming to visit the parks can stay at a hotel. So we'll just put a couple on either side over here. And then we'll also want to make sure that uh, people coming to uh, watch the baseball game or visiting teams or anything like that will have hotels available to them. So we will put the hotels in here around the stadium as well. It's like we are missing some water. So we will continue our pipes just along here. Make sure everything has enough water. And then everything is going to hopefully fill in here. Okay, while that was all filling in, it looks like our amusement park got up to level two. So we'll go back into the menu here and see what we've unlocked. Looks like we have the piggy train and the rotating teacups. So those are both now available to us. So we'll just throw those in right now while we can. We'll double check the entertainment level of our park. And you can see we're even still now above the entertainment value for the next level. And all we need to do now is wait for the uh, visitors to come to the park. And speaking of which, I'm going to actually go into the policies of uh, this other park over here and turn on the same stuff that I had last time. And uh, that should be good. Perfect. Give that an opportunity to also level up. We're, uh, we're ahead on the entertainment and again, just waiting for visitors to come to the park. So I did also notice during our time lapse that we do have another junction over here, it looks like. So I'm going to take out this light here and allow people to go uh, towards the actual main intersection over here a little bit easier. There's no point in having another stoplight this close to the other stoplight that's right here, especially on this road where there's really not going to be too much traffic other than people who are coming and going to the parks themselves. I also noticed that there's lots of people coming down the pathways here, going towards the uh, metro station and towards the trams and things like that, coming towards our parks. So that's pretty good. 
I'm also going to put in some uh, generic commercial industries or commercial buildings, pardon me, just across the way over here. I think I want to put in too many though, so we will just use the highlighting tool, or what's this one called? The marquee tool, pardon me, and uh, we'll just fill in a couple buildings across the way. There, so we'll let those level up as well and unlock some of the buildings that'll go in there. I think I'm going to make them um, historical buildings though, just so they don't get too tall and kind of uh, overshadow the stadium and things like that. Uh, just like the, um, the transport hub over here, I kind of like having the contrast of having the really tall towers for the hotels right here. So I am going to uh, make the commercial building historic and then uh, have everything else kind of tall. You see this one is actually already really tall. So we are gonna get rid of that one and see if something else will go in its place. Okay, I think that is gonna be it for now. Uh, we just really have to wait for the parks to level up. Uh, one other thing that I might do uh, off camera, it's not really something that I need to show everybody, is, is put a fence just around the outside edge um, and maybe a couple other commercial buildings just in the area. Uh, but I'm going to let everything level up and I will see everybody back here in just a second. So it took a little bit of time after I ended the last segment to actually level up both of our parks. The amusement park was much easier to level up than the city park over here. Uh, our citizens seem to like the amusement park more than they do the city park. But everything is now at five stars, so we have uh, pretty much most of the buildings in. Um, all of the amusement park buildings are in right now, but we are missing a couple for the city park because they need water for them. So I think uh, two of them are uh, docks, uh, so there's the two park piers. So we don't have either of those in here uh, because we don't have any water. Uh, so we do have a couple duplicate buildings. Uh, I have two of the chess boards and a couple of the gazebos. Um, I haven't really done too much decorating. I did the fences around the outside edges of both parks, as I mentioned. And I also put um, some of these big redwood trees inside of the park on the, the city park over here on the left. Um, so uh, our baseball team is doing quite good. I think we lost the first match. That must have been a different season. Uh, so far, we are 6-0 and this season, so that's pretty good. Um, everything is going pretty well so far. Uh, there's a little bit of traffic issue when um, the match ends and everybody's actually leaving the stadium. But uh, that is kind of expected because there is quite a large volume of people who do leave. Um, I'm, I'm thinking that uh, part of the issue is that the only public transportation to the stadium here is actually uh, mostly around this high density neighborhood here. There's not really too much access from the low density neighborhood across the river or even across the highway to be getting over here uh, unless they all go up to the public transportation hub over here and then down on the uh, monorail line or pardon me, the metro line to the stadium. So it's kind of a little bit out of the way. Uh, I think if I had a more direct public transportation pathway to the stadium that it would be a little bit better for traffic, uh, but we'll deal with that a little bit later. I have a feeling that once we continue to expand the city, I'm gonna have to go back and review the public transportation and kind of sort everything out, kind of change things up for whatever the city that we have now compared to what it was uh, last time when I did the change in the public transportation. Uh, so with the, um, with, the, with the amusement park here, we do have all of the buildings in, like I said, uh, the tier five, the five star buildings were uh, the roller coaster here and the Ferris wheel. So the, those do uh, look pretty cool, uh, especially at night. Uh, I'm, I'm not a big fan of roller coasters myself, so I would I would never go on this ride here. Uh, but uh, it seems to be pretty popular. We had 29 visitors last week and nine tourists. So that's pretty cool. And uh, I think that is going to be it for this episode. Um, yeah, I didn't really do anything uh, outside of, of the couple things I described, the fences and the trees and things like that. Oh, and uh, I did notice that uh, during the time lapse, uh, I was taking a look at some, uh, not the time lapse, sorry, during the uh, last segment, I was looking at some of these buildings and I was making the comment about uh, one of the commercial buildings that was being put in actually being quite tall. And I did realize though that uh, the district that we put in here for uh, the other hotels 
actually does extend to the other side. So a couple of these taller buildings that's on the two lane local road is actually uh, hotel buildings. They're tourism buildings. So we have these hotels and these cafes and things like that. Uh, but then the buildings that are along the four lane collector road are uh, the commercial buildings. So I've left those in for now. Now we just have a couple taller buildings on the outside edge. So that's kind of cool. Uh, I guess if you had a, a good enough room, you could have a room on the top uh, floor of the hotel and be able to watch the baseball game down below. Uh, so that's kind of interesting. And uh, yeah, so uh, like I said, that'll be it for the episode. Thank you all very much for watching. Uh, don't hesitate to let me know down below what you thought about this episode with a like or dislike or even leave a comment. If you enjoyed the episode, don't hesitate to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already for some more City Skylines content in the future. And I'll see everybody in the next episode.